I always start with a spoiler alert. I didn't do that this time. I'll have to make sure it's <laughs> tagged at the beginning of the video. Grace and peace. I'm Ryan. I'm the movie pastor. I don't call myself that because I'm the only pastor that watches movies, but because I have a movie pass and I use it for pastoring. I go to movies and then I talk with y'all theologically about the movies. What are the messages they're sending and what do those messages mean? How do we read them like a theological text and interpret them? What's that process of hermeneutics look like when we go to the cinema? And I'm going to be applying that today to the movie Spies in Disguise. That's a children's movie. So when I talk about children's movies, I always want to clarify for any parents that might be watching, if you're hoping I'm going to explain whether this movie has a positive family-friendly message and whether you can take your kids and you have to worry about them, that's, that's beyond my pay grade. I don't know. I don't know your kids. I, I, that's, that's not what this is about. What this is about is that Every movie, no matter who it's directed towards, who's watching it, what's going on, is is saying something and is doing something. And so I'm engaging with those ideas as a person with theological training. This movie, Spies in Disguise, I actually went to it by accident. Um, I was going to go see the movie Bombshell. Oh, I was in the mood for some social commentary. My wife and I we were going to go see that. Uh, and there weren't any good seats. And so... Same time, there was a showing of Spies in Skies, and uh, we went and saw that. It was really good. Not only was it really good, really funny, it, it was great social commentary. The social commentary dealt a lot with the lethal force, LF, or less than lethal force, or LT, LTL, I think it is, less than lethal. It, 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 there are sides of people, and they're very, very passionate about that, that issue, lethal force versus less than lethal force. And so what this movie does, and this is a movie, this is a James Bond spoof in which the main character gets turned into a pigeon. It's a silly movie. But the main conflict of the movie isn't between the protagonist, Lance, and the primary villain, who, who goes by the name Robot Hand. That's, that's what we call him throughout the movie. But rather, the, the thing we spend the most time on, the biggest conflict of the movie, is between... Lance and Walter, the primary protagonist and the secondary protagonist, because Lance believes in lethal force. He likes to blow stuff up. He wants to use as much force as possible to take down all the bad guys. Whereas Walter doesn't believe in lethal force. He, he says there's a better way. Not only does he not believe in lethal force, but he's kind of biased towards a, like, aggressively cutesy kind of less than lethal force. He fights crime with things like glitter and rainbows and hugs. He, he wants to surround the world in a hug and give love while he is stopping evil. And this debate rages throughout the film. Now, it's always important when we talk about theology to spend some time thinking about context. Uh, we have a context the authors who made it have a context, and there's, of course, a context of things that are happening inside the movie. And I am reeling, because last week at a church very much like mine, there was a gunman who came in, shot two people, and then was shot to death by one of the parishioners. This was in Texas. He had a concealed carry weapon and uh, stopped the attack from getting any worse. And so that is huge for the lethal force, less than the lethal force debate in society. A lot of times it is connected, it aligns one-to-one -one with how you feel about gun control. If you like guns, you are likely to defend the use of lethal force and, and the argument that there is a time and a place to use guns. If you dislike guns, you're likely to, to be biased towards a perspective that says, let's avoid it. But, but there's a lot more to that debate than even that. A lot of the debate about lethal force less than lethal force comes down to practicalities. Lethal force people will say, this is the only way it's going to work. This, this is what's effective. Whereas less than lethal force people will say, technology has changed. Maybe it was the only thing that was effective previously. We've got new gadgets now that might even be more effective than things like guns. You know, we can disable people. I mean, I obviously have a perspective in the debate, but my perspective isn't important. I'm, I'm, not, <clears throat> I'm not trying to argue about that point with you. But, but I want you to notice the way that debate takes shape. 
it's it, it's the kind of thing you bring in crime statistics, you know, and you talk about, well, this, this municipality did this, and this municipality did this, and this one worked better than that one. Spies in disguise enters into the debate, it doesn't do any of that. At, at no point does Walter, like, show Lance how much more effective his gadgets are than Lance's. In fact, Lance, in the movie, is indisputably the most effective spy in the world. And Walter, from the get-go, says, yeah, your way works. You're, yeah, you, you can absolutely kill bad guys. That is an option available to us. But he says there is a better way. And his reasoning is theological in nature. He gives a theological reason for it. When, when pressed on the issue, when Lance is on the yacht with him, he says, you know, you don't understand what it's like. I need to stop bad guys. And I need to stop bad guys with as much force as I can. We gotta, we gotta kill them. We gotta stop the bad guys. Walter says there's no such thing as bad people. There's only people. And so there's a better way to stop the bad, but you've got to protect the people. He separates evil from people. That's, that's a theological position. It may not be a theological position you agree with, but it's certainly one that we talk a lot about within Christian theology. It's this idea that everyone has sin within them. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. That's called the total depravity of sin. But... That the sin we have within us is not the same as our immortal soul, which is created in the image of God. That there is something to every human being that is deserving of dignity, and that's even deserving of glory and honor. There's, there's something holy, there's something godly about every person. And so that's why when we see someone doing evil, um, we, we can grieve the evil, absolutely, and the, the hurt that they're causing to other people. But we can also grieve the hurt that they're causing to themselves, that there's an immortal soul within every evildoer that is abused, that is damaged, that is, uh, you know, something we can, we can have pity on. That's why Jesus says, love your enemies, pray for those who persecute you, because, because our enemies are, the, the humans that we struggle against aren't really our enemies. Elsewhere in the Bible, it says your struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the powers and the principalities of this age, uh, the spiritual forces. It's <clears throat> the, the evil, uh, it, the demonic stuff, the voices in our head that say, be selfish, be greedy. Sometimes the voices in our head that say, kill. Some people have those voices in their head. They don't belong to the people. Right? There, there's something beside the people, and we can be against the voices, we can be against the impulses, and still in favor of the people. But the question remains, what do we have to do? What happens when, when we're pushed to the limit and we've got to make a decision? Okay, there's, there's a person doing evil. He might not be an essentially evil person. He might not be more sinful than I am, but he's, he's got a bomb and he wants to blow people up. Am I going to do something bad to him in order to protect all of the other people I'm pushed to the limit here, what am I going to do? That's a hard question. I can admit that's a, that's a really hard decision. I'm glad that I can expect that I don't, I don't have to be in those kind of decisions on a daily basis. But the movie puts us in that position. It puts Walter in that position because Walter actually goes and faces Robot Hand, not Lance. Uh, they, they go head to head. Lance, you know, at some other points. Um, but they're the climax of the movie. Both Walter and Robot Hand are are flying away on a drone. Walter's hanging on to Robot Hand. They're they're way too high, and Robot Hand is excited. You know, he says, "Yeah, you you can stop me. You can disable the drone. You can disable all the drones and save everyone, but it's gonna kill me. You have to make a choice. There's no less than lethal force option now. You, I I'm gonna die." Uh, if, if you stop me or you got to let me do this. So he knows I put you in a position where you're going to have to compromise your integrity. And what happens in the movie, man, this is so Christian. Walter puts the hug, the, the protective hug device on robot hand, saves his life, which means Walter's going to die. Walter then plummets without any safety device to his sure death. And then Lance saves him. 
man, that's, that's what Jesus does, right? What do you do when you're pushed against the wall when there are no options? Remember, uh, dying is an option rather than giving up your integrity. R remember that sacrificing everything rather than sacrificing your integrity is an option. Does that satisfactorily answer the debate? I don't know. But man, is it an interesting contribution to the debate and a much more interesting contribution than I would expect from a movie that looked as frankly stupid as this movie looks. I hope you'll talk with me more about this debate about the ways we engage, and about other things you noticed in Spies in Disguise besides that one aspect that have import on our morals, on our daily life, on the big questions of what life means and what life is about. And I will see you next time on The Movie Pastor. By the way, I'd love it if you could give me a like down in the corner, if you could subscribe to my channel, and especially if you could share one of these videos. The more people I can get these videos in front of, the more subscribers I get, the more people are going to hear these messages and think, and learn to think theologically as we talk about the movies that we're watching anyway. Thanks. Bye. And when in scenes of glory I sing Will be the old old story.